So we're going to look at the idea of a controller here. Uh, controller is basically going to be a simplified set of tools to manipulate a larger sort of more complex array of geometry. And in this case what we're going to make is this sort of graphic equalizer system where you can grab a hold of your controls here, if I can get to them, and you can control through a simple set of sliders your whole larger array of elements by a relatively simple set of controls. And uh, there are other ways to do this too where you have individual controls over this, but we're going to do one that's actually going to have a little bit more of a resemblance to a graphic equalizer that you would have on like a stereo or something to control levels in a sort of coordinated way. The way we're going to do this is we're going to start off with a new family. And we're just going to get a regular mass family. And we're going to get ourselves a circle. It's going to be a reference. And I'm going to turn off closed loop. Doesn't really matter all that much. I'm going to select my circle. I'm going to make that a permanent dimension. And this, uh, oh, actually, I don't need to do that. What am I doing? You can just grab that guy and you can extrude it. Whoop, up you go. So our little extrusion here has a height. It also has a built in parameter set for it called the positive offset. And I'm going to make that a new parameter. It's going to be an it doesn't really matter if it's an instance or type for this exercise. And I'm going to call this uh, uh, height A. And it's going to be a length, and we'll leave all the rest of that the same. Okay. And I'm going to make just a simple setup here now, which just has one controller to start off with. So I'm going to take my line tool and I want to make sure that I'm drawing on level 1 just to keep things easier to look at. I drew my line. I'm going to host a point on it. And I like my points to have their reference planes showing always. So I'm just going to turn that on. And now I want to do something that's going to relate where this thing is to how tall this thing is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a dimension and I'm going to put it on the work plane of this reference line. And I'm going to measure from this guy to the end of the line. And I'm going to call this dimension, uh, let's call it controller A, because it's going to control that guy. Now, in here, I don't want to just have like a one-to-one -one relationship because I want this thing to have a much bigger range than my controller. So I'm going to say controller A is height A divided by 2, let's say, which is about where it is right now. So now I have a controller. So if I move this guy around, it's going to move around what the height of that line is. See? Uh, and it's not a one-to-one -one relationship, it's a one-to-two relationship. And I can reposition this thing wherever I want, and then, you know, wherever is going to be convenient for me to control my model. And uh, I'm going to make five more of those in exactly the same way. And I'm just going to pause, and we'll come back in a second. So I've copied out my guys here, and I haven't quite hooked up all of my controllers yet. Um, but I'm just going to show you sort of a quick way to do that. So I've got my controller A, and I'm just going to go copy, paste, 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 and then I can just go in and change all of these to, oops, height E is not, oh, yeah. So one thing is that Revit and Vasari are case sensitive. So a couple of these I did with the wrong thing. I'm just going to roll with it for now. Uh, and call this one capital H D. This gets back to clear names, which I haven't shown here, but 
now you see what you suffer for those sorts of decisions. So there, I've got all of my controllers. Controller E is hooked up to height E, etc., etc. Let's just sort of make sure all these guys are working. And grab this guy and move. Whoa! Whoops! <laughs> yeah, I didn't do that right. So this guy is going to be controller E. This guy is going to be control uh, height D. This guy is going to be height C. And this guy is going to be height B. And this guy is still set as controller E, which is correct. This guy is controller D. This guy is controller C. And this guy is controller B. All right, let's try that again. Immediate feedback on your errors here, too. So we've got that guy. Everybody's working. And, you know, to make it a proper uh, equalizer, what would be nice is to make it so that you can actually use the equivalent of the side of your hand to push everything up all at once. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add one more sort of a uh, super controller. I'm going to do a spline through points. And I'm going to host it on level one. And I'm going to go... Uh, let's give ourselves sort of two control points in there. So if I go like that, now I can take each one of these controllers and I can host point by intersection to these lines. So if I select those guys and I host by intersection, I now have sort of a, I have basically a two point controller to control all of them. And you'll see what I mean in a second. I select all these host points by intersection all the way down. You can see where this would become a hassle if you had like hundreds of things, but you know, for the idea of a graphic equalizer, this works pretty well. So now I've got all these things hosted on these lines. You can see that now my columns, my extrusions are making sort of roughly an arc, just like these guys are making roughly an arc. And if I go in and I select these points, I can move them around, and everything's moving with it but everything's moving with it in relationship to how this arc is moving, or the spline is moving, that is. So I'm going to make a high point over here. Everybody's moving together. And that, my friends, is the graphic equalizer controller.